can we please welcome Mr. Alton Bester from Kumba Iron Ore, who will be presenting on burr monitoring the Kumba Iron Ore journey. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's been a long, uh, long day, so I'm going to uh, do my utmost to uh, to keep my uh, address brief. <coughs> Um, but uh, again, thanks to Roytech, thanks to Jan and the team uh, for the opportunity. It is, it's much appreciated. Uh, my name is Alton Besta. I work as part of the technology department at, uh, at Kumba Iron Ore, which is a division of the Anglo-American PLC group. We operate two mines in the Northern Cape, namely Sishin and uh, Kolomela. And uh, at the moment, we have uh, six of the BMS trailers at our Kolomela operation. And we're in the process of uh, rolling out another 17 of these trailers to uh, Sishin. Uh, that should be complete at the end of Q1 uh, 2022. So uh, one of the priority unwanted events at, uh, at our operations is a truck over the edge uh, incident. Uh, and this would typically be where a truck reverses over the edge of a waste dump uh, over the edge of an ore stockpile or it drives off a, off a bench. Uh, and the issue around this, of course, is that we can end up with a fatality. Uh, and an example of this is shown on the, in the image on the lower right-hand side. This is from uh, when I was working uh, at Tabazimi Mine back in 2010. Uh, we had a, a, a similar type of uh, incident at um, the uh, Duaneng operation at uh, Dibswana a couple of years later in, in Botswana. And so we started seeing that there was uh, there were a number of these types of incidents occurring. Some of them more minor, you know, just near misses. But unfortunately, uh, a number of them also uh, resulting in, in fatalities. Uh, and so one of the controls that we have in place to prevent these types of incidents is a so-called safety boom. And on the waste dump, it would be it would be then be referred to as a waste a waste dump safety boom. And so the the idea behind the safety boom is that it's a physical barrier that's constructed out of the waste material on the dump, uh, and is constructed to a design height, which is approximately half the diameter of the biggest truck operating on that uh, dump. And the idea is that it would then serve as an indication to the driver of the truck as to when they're reaching the edge of the tip. Uh, and in some instances, the guys use it as an arrest for the truck. So the person reverses up to it and then uh, safely tips their load. Unfortunately, if that berm is substandard, we end up with an event like the one seen at the, on the lower right hand side. Uh, and so uh, in the past and for many years, we've had a fairly uh, basic and subjective means of actually assessing berm heights. Uh, being uh, being miners, we uh, did the best that we could, but um, we, we really just made use of either height poles uh, or literally plastic cones. So there'd be a plastic cone, color-coded cone that's out in the field. And uh, there'd be one on the one end of the, of, the, of, the, of the dump and one on the other end, and you'd kind of look at it and say, okay, well, this looks, this looks okay. Uh, and uh, yeah, we, we, I think we ultimately started realizing this is probably not the best means of, of doing things. So we need to come up with, uh, with a better way of doing this and, and certainly technology could lend a hand in us achieving that. And uh, so when we started looking at uh, a solution, uh, uh, and I've put this funnel together here, we, we started with, off with kind of a set of, of user requirements. And the first one was that we actually wanted a tool that could actually measure and, it, it, and take that sort of subjectivity out of, the, out of the equation. The second one was that uh, for our minds in the Northern Cape, for those that have been there, it uh, can get fairly unpleasant out in the pit, either heat or cold. Uh, so we wanted a robust solution that we could deploy there. Uh, the third one was that we were looking for something that required minimal movement. Um, and so there we had to consider, you know, do we want to go with a, a trailer or would we want to put something on a truck? 
uh, to, to get the monitoring done. Uh, the fourth thing was 24-7 uh, operations. And then the last one was to have that information available as near to real time as possible. Uh, and so we started considering what we already had on the on the operations. And we have the Regal uh, scanners that the guys use in the survey department. And so uh, Johan van Heeren, who's uh, one of our colleagues who's not present today, uh, you know, started talking about how this could potentially be used as a tool to do the measuring. Uh, and then we also started looking and considering the, the platforms that we had by way of other trailers, uh, such as the, the slope stability uh, trailer and so on. And, and really through partnering with Roytech, with Hortz and Cyperion, we started to develop and, and sort of funnel this thing down into to what ultimately became the, the burn monitoring uh, system. So it was a very nice way of really repurposing uh, uh, you know, a lot of tools that we actually had on the mine uh, in a new and, uh, and unique way. So uh, this next slide, I'm just going to play a quick clip. And this is, uh, this was put together by Roytech, but it explains the working of the, of the system quite nicely. There we go. All right, so as one can see from the, the video clip, there's a, there's a number of components that make up the, the system. And so the next couple of slides, I'd like to just zoom in and talk a little bit more specifically about, firstly, the hardware side, which is really the, the trailer platform, as well as the communications network. Uh, and then a little bit about the software side, uh, which is the, the software both on the trailer and then also the software, which is the user interface, which is ultimately exposed in the, the mines control room. Uh, and so starting to look at the hardware, um, we'll just talk about a little bit about that just from the top to the bottom and just basically how the system works. So it all starts with the scanner that's uh, sitting right atop the trailer. That's the Regal uh, VZ400i uh, that scans every three minutes. Uh, and that data is then taken down into this uh, laptop cabinet. There's a, a Dell laptop that sits inside there and does some data crunching. Uh, and that data is then sent via this Ragent Wi-Fi uh, radio across the network over the Wi-Fi mesh onto a backbone of sorts back to a server. And then it's ultimately exposed to the control room operator who uh, sits inside the control room. And then, of course, there are one or two other, one or two other odds and ends. I think the the other part of it is that we we opted for for solar power. Um, obviously, the the Northern Cape lends itself quite nicely to that. Uh, and then also just to talk a little bit about this journey that we've been on and kind of the iterative nature of the of uh, what we've been through. So you can see, uh, just for interest's sake, you know how the trailers changed uh, changed over time. And so we we started off with a proof of concept, uh, went to roll out at Colomera, and each time we we developed something and deployed it. We learned certain lessons around things like, for example, power. Uh, Edwin had a few sleepless nights, th thanks to us around that. 
um, and uh, and then also looking at things like ease of ease of movement, ease of use for the person that actually needs to move that thing, uh, and then typically things like operator safety, nip points, uh, you know, how easy is it to clean the uh, clean the solar panels, so on and so forth, and then of course. We had the challenge of also trying to meet the requirements of the engineers on the mine, which I think had Francho uh, but read in the face on occasion. Um, all right, so if I then move on to the to the software side of things, so it is worth noting that when we started off initially two years back, that no no software like this existed. This was this was essentially developed from scratch. Uh, and so the process that we followed was firstly to start talking to the teams on site at, at, at Columella and Session and really starting to put together a set of kind of user requirements around what they would typically like to like to see. And uh, of course, we continue to, to mature the software, um, you know, as we go. So um, what's seen on this slide over here is a so-called landing page. So this is typically what an operator sitting in the control room would see if they open up the system. Uh, this is for Columella mine, so there's an aerial image of the mine showing the location of the different trailers. Uh, and then here at the top, you can see the different trailer numbers and descriptions. And there's also then an indication of the status. So a green, uh, uh, a green circle there indicating that, look, uh, the system's operating like it should. The comms is good, the laser scan is good, the power is good, uh, and so on and so forth. So it's a quick reference. And then... Uh, very importantly, if there is an alarm of sorts, so if there is a berm which is non-compliant or substandard, then uh, the operator can can see that there, and they then have the option to go and delve into or go and look at a specific uh, trailer. So obviously, a trailer counts one trailer per per active waste dump. All right. Uh, although this isn't a specific screenshot of the of the um, the system itself, uh, I wanted to make this image a little bit bigger just to uh, just explain what the person actually sees. So there's two parts to this. We'll start with the portion on the left, and so this is a top view of the dump, and the color coding is the berm, which is at the edge of the dump, um, as explained previously. And so green is means within specification. It's it's good. And uh, red is out of specification. So in our case at Columella, that would mean it's less than 1.8 meters high. Um, the circle over there, uh, the red circle, uh, indicates the longest portion of berm, uh, which is substandard. So typically, if you were trying to attend to that or trying to repair it, that's the place that you would start. And of course, that circle will move uh, continuously. Uh, then, uh, just for orientation purposes, you've got the, the trailer, which is the dark blue icon. Uh, you've got the yellow, it's maybe a little bit difficult to see, but there's a yellow circle around that. So the, the Regal scanner scans at full 360 degrees. But then we have an area of analysis that we're interested in. And typically this is where the, the, the technician comes into play. So we've got a, a comprehensive service level agreement and the technician and the foreman have to be in discussion daily around you know how to set this uh, area of analysis so you would typically be interested in the making sure that you cover the areas where the trucks are tipping um, and that and that of course changes over time uh, then a nice example of of how the system is, has matured over uh, the, over the last two years is uh, you know once we rolled out the initial uh, user interface we started looking at you know how can you track whether these things are actually being attended to or how they're being attended to, how quickly are they being attended to. And so we gave the guys uh, a tool whereby they can actually see, uh, you know, the previous shift or the previous 12 hours. Let's see if this plays. And so while that plays, you can now start seeing that, you can start seeing how the, the dump improves over time. And uh, I think that you know, if I was a section manager, that would put my mind at ease to know that the, the teams that are out there are making sure that the dumps are being looked after and that uh, those activities are are taking place safely. In terms of enhancements, so when we were rolling out uh, the solution at, at Columella, um, one of the suggestions or requirements from site was that the guys would like to be able to see the interface, not just in the control room, 
but actually in the in the mining environment itself. Uh, so, so what Columella typically does is, or how they were working was, the person would take a a, a, a picture, just a photograph of the user interface, and actually pop that on WhatsApp and get that to the foreman. Um, uh, and of course, I mean that's uh, it, it. Kind of it doesn't help you getting it updated every three minutes, and the person WhatsApps you every two hours, or, or you know something like that. So, uh, so we then uh, started having those discussions with with Francois and the Roytech team, and um, ultimately we we then came up with this design, or they came up with this design, which sort of integrated this tablet into the trailer, and. Um, so it's it's uh, I think a, a big uh, positive for me that the the 17 trailers that we're going to be rolling out at Session have this already uh, as part of the deployment, and so what you can do is any person that's on the dump in the field, day or night, can simply walk up to the trailer, press the button, and then you can actually see that view and see the compliance of the the overall compliance of the of the dump. A uh, another enhancement that we Currently in the process of trialing at uh, at the, uh, our Columella operation is the the dozer interface, uh, and so the focus of the dozer interface is really to to try to equip the person that actually needs to undertake repairs with a tool that allows them to to do that effectively and and as quickly as possible. So we have we we've got this information and we might know that the berm is substandard, but you know how quickly can we actually transition and, and get that fixed. Uh, and so uh, that would entail having this uh, this tablet inside the, the dozer. And the operator would then be able to see a top view very similar to what the control room operator sees. But in this instance, the person can actually see the location of the dozer in relation to the portion of boom that needs to be fixed. I think this would be uh, uh, the biggest benefit here would probably be at night. When, when you know it's quite difficult to actually see what's going on on, on a dump, um, so this is something that you know for me is very exciting because it really, I think we're going to have a very complete uh, solution once this uh, once this gets done. So we're looking forward to the results of that, and um, really just to wrap up, I think you know we've uh, I've listed a couple of the benefits there, and and I've spoken to a few of those during the course of the presentation, but. The, the crux of it is that we have gone from a position where we we have a very really subjective means or a very archaic means of like a cone to a system that is accurate and reliable. Uh, and that can help us ensure that our berms are being checked, that they're in place uh, and that they're compliant. And ultimately that allows us to send our all truck operators home safely each day. Thank you very much.